Hey everybody, here we are for another League of Light cast. This is top 16 of Division 2 action. We have got Sleepy Rain Dog taking on Get in the Van 18. Two friends of mine, two people I, I genuinely enjoy their words and their time and their company. So here we are, they're facing off against each other. So it looks like Get in the Van opted to go first, went ahead and put out a red mage. And then Sleepy countered with her own Selkie. She's going to flip, reveal. Looks like she revealed a march off the hand. And they're both playing pretty quick. I love that. So we know that Sleepy Rain Dog is playing Fire Lightning. And they both definitely have Odins in their list. So she's already got two Odins in her break zone. And then get in the van. He's already put one Odin in his list. He is Mono Lightning. So will Mono Lightning carry the day with its just superior single element power? Does that even exist anymore? Or... Will the dual elements show that Mono is truly dead once and for all? Instead of Clan Gully, gonna go ahead and get us an Alua. Search for category, yeah. So when that new Alua comes out in Opus 14, we're gonna be able to, this guy can search a nice fire card all of a sudden, which will be pretty sweet. Excellent. So getting the Van's happy to just, Van is just, I'm gonna just try to call him Van for short. Van is happy to just curve out backups. I'm going to assume Rainy will probably be similar. We'll see what she decides to do with this turn. She'll pitch a Ranjit, pitch Bahamut, and, ooh, and she'll go with the March forward, hoping to hit a fire card. Fire backup would be good here, which is exactly what we got. Mutsuki, perfect. As long as we have a single other fire card in hand, we can plop that down this turn. That'll feel pretty good. And then we are color fixed. I've talked with Rainy before about this deck, and you know I've seen a few of those matches where sometimes she just struggles to draw one element or the other, so getting both down right away is going to feel pretty good. All right, she will put down a Moody, will pitch an Amaterasu, and actually go search out an Amaterasu, so she's got one in hand. Now she's set up to play that Mutsuki at next turn, and of course you've always got to be a little careful when you, you know your opponent has an Amaterasu in hand. At the same time, she has no backups to tap, so she's going to be pitching a lot from hand to do it speaking of which here comes sakura great new opus 13 backup we'll happily just break that march as we curve out pretty good play from vaughn there Ooh, this is the old opus one odin with right uh right and brightening i almost said lightning lighting the horse lightning riding the horse nice little counter to march doesn't feel any pressure to put out a forward yet this is right where van wants to be just curving out backup still got a full five in hand Sleepy's got six in hand as well. She easily just tapped to hit Mitsuki past her opponent. No, she's going for the Alba play. Interesting. Okay, so we are going to lose one of these Odins. Let's see. Did she target the five CP one? It's like four, five, seven. What do you prefer? I know Sleepy has a way to get summons back through Terra. I cannot remember if Van does. But, however, we do have that six CP Odin, which gets cheaper for every Odin. So we're moving that from the break zone will make that Odin more expensive, and Alba's going to get haste. Alba can go in a second time. We're going to knock out a second Odin. That's going to be two. And are we going to see an Odin into burst? No, we'll see a Kane into burst. I don't know if we necessarily wanted to use that this turn anyway, but that feels pretty good. Interesting she didn't opt for the Mutsuki. I mean, she still could. If she's got a fire in hand, she could just pitch that. Throw out the Mutsuki, we'd be set up for three next turn, which she is going to do. No, interesting. Okay, she's going for the Rubicante. So she it looks like she really wants to keep this pressure on early. I would have thought for sure she'd curve out to three, but she says, I don't think so. Throws away another fire backup too. But she is happy to put this pressure on Van. Just says, hey, you got to respond to this. I'm not, I'm not going to give you that time to just sit there and set up. Now, granted, he could just continue to set up to five if he really wants to. Possibly go to probably go to three damage maybe a little more you know we've got the alu in hand alui alua is actually a really great forward against this rubicante because even if she blocks with it rubicante is just going to pop the alua bubble on his death trigger so alua will avoid that which is very nice looks like we pitched a spare red mage so we've got four so what would be coming down for four no is it six? Oh, and we threw out our lid back up too adia very nice so Adia is going to just go ahead and get rid of... Who do you get rid of? So you can get rid of the Rubicante pretty cleanly here. In that, yeah, it'll deal at five. But no, he opts for the Alba. He just he was like, nope, I don't want my break zone to keep losing summons or characters. So let's just go ahead and get that out of here. All right, and then we'll pass back. Uh, it's uh, always nice to see this old, old lightning legend. Still kicking butt. 
So what did we throw out for that? We threw out a lid. Man, I hate to see the lid go. That's one of my favorite lightning backups. The red mage, of course, makes sense, because even though you could put down another copy, you've already got one. That is a bit of a shame to lose the lid. But obviously felt the need to respond with that kind of pressure. If you're sleepy here, is she going to go aggressive? No, she's going to... Let's see. Kali Cheval. Get an Agido Cadet. So yeah, she'll probably get another copy of Mitsuki. Probably throw out the Mitsuki. Play her other Mitsuki. There you go. Just curve out to four. Happy to sit there. Unlike Alua, Rubicante can easily block the Adia. He's more than happy to do that. They'll trade with his on-death trigger. But still be happy to see an Alua here. W again, I kind of ashamed to throw that lid out. But if we have a Sage, I don't know if we run Sage in this deck. Another good way to get a fourth back up and to get a character back in our hand. Move to combat. Rainy will let the Adia come through. Takes point of damage. Gets a nice Citra there. That'll get her back any one of her summons. I forgot she's got Citra in here too. So that's another way to get back summons. Got plenty of choices. Got a 6 EP Odin, Amaterasu, Bahamut, two of the other Odins. A dealer's choice, as they would say. It's really anything you want. Grabbing an Amaterasu in hand. So there is the threat to use it, but it will cost our opponent their entire hand at this point. So most likely, unless we just put something devastating down, probably not going to be something we'll worry about. We threw out a Behemoth King, put down King of Bermesia, going to search a Dragoon. So I'm going to assume this will either be Astinian Kane or I can't remember if he runs Aranea or not. Yep, we'll grab Kane. Kane is a very effective way to deal with this Rubicante. We'll just guarantee we completely nullify that death trigger. Can't do uh can't do any damage if it doesn't have any power. And then we'll pass back to our opponent. Rainy will enter combat. We will attack Hidden Ramu, which breaks a forward of two or less. Oh man, Rubicante is just in perfect range for that. We can go ahead and ping the Adia for five. So if we want to, we can finish it off with the Mutsuki. So not terrible. So yeah, we could finish off this idea with Mutsuki, but still not a bad way to get rid of. Ah, op what is this? Opus 4, 1 CP run? We haven't seen this one in a while. And a little clarification there. She thought for a second that maybe the Rubicante trigger didn't work because of the EX burst. But nope, that just doesn't negate like you can't respond to it. So Rubicante will still take it out on death. Nice little consolation prize here for Rainy. That way she can finish it off without having to commit. Keeps five in hand. Ooh, and we're playing Opus 7 X Death, so we can choose a forward and Iron. Oh, it's going to be Behemoth King. We'll curve out to five backups. Here it comes. Okay, hold on. She's probably going to Amaterasu this X Death. Yeah, which, I, I don't know. Do you want to do this? I mean, you don't like the Behemoth King. Always feels kind of bad to do it on a backup. <sighs> it's hard to say. So we did have the CP open. We didn't have to overpay. That's really good. Van just fine. All right, fine pass. But at the same time, like, we have so many summons and such in here that you could have easily just taken out the Behemoth King with a with an Odin, too. But I don't know her hand, so maybe she didn't have anything in hand. So maybe that was just the cleanest way to deal with it. And the good news is the Behemoth King would... Well, no, actually. Okay, so Van had left up the Red Mage. He was going to give it haste. So that was the right, mate. right play, absolutely. I forgot about the Red Mage there we would have hit our opponent for two points of damage there. So definitely the right call to cast Amaterasu on that. Nice sneaky little play with this X death by Van. I like that. He's such a neat neat backup. I was playing a boss battle last night and he's really fun to use in boss battle because in that, you know, the boss can get up to 10 backups. So you can bring back, I think I'd have to read the card just to be sure, but I'm pretty sure you can bring back Something like Sin or Nail or Sephiroth, just these massive forwards. Whereas, again, in the normal version, it's always capped out at five. So that's very fun. But Van's right where he wants to be. Set up to five backups. We'll Sleepy go for aggression. Put out a forward. It's not really aggression at this point. Go ahead and get back a summon. Probably another Amaterasu. Unless we're scared of Behemoth K coming back. Grab back an Odin. We've got three Odins in the break zone. So it's only going to cost us three to cast it. And let's see what Van has in response. He definitely would be happy to have Alba here. She'd be a good one. We can start dumping these Odins. You don't really care if your opponent burns Amaterasu on an Alba. 
But both players are, are set up well on backups, and they've both got healthy hands. So and now it's going to just come down to the plays and the draws. So see who comes out on top. All right, Vaughn is going to get rid of Sakura from his backup line, pitch Noden, bring down the Kane, threaten to reduce Terra by 8,000. Could Amaterasu it, but again, that costs three from hand, so Sleepy's just ready to let that go. I wonder if he's got another Sakura in hand or a lid, something to replace that backup spot with. Alba wouldn't be bad here either, because now we can get rid of one of these summons and rush in. Oh, no, we're just going to give him haste with the red mage. Interesting. Okay. So Kane's going to come in, pop our opponent for a point of damage. No lucky burst that time, so we're one we're we're one and one on both sides. One burst, one non-burst. And there we go. Man, this this Kane is such an interesting card. And I liked him even when he came back out in Opus 9. Because especially there was a lot of lightning backups that wanted to go to the break zone. Rampier obviously made a big splash in Opus 10. But this is definitely one of those cards that can get punished pretty hard by Amaterasu when your opponent's willing to do that, so. All right, Rainy is going to drop Zandi onto the field. Are we going to use his ability? Because we can finish it off with Mutsuki. So as long, yep, we're fine taking a point of damage. Deal 7,000 to the Kane, and then we'll use Mutsuki to finish it off. We will still have one card in hand, so we're probably going to want to pay something else out. But nonetheless, we get our Kane off the field. Go up to three damage, and then do we play something out, or do we just discard for turn? Another Alba is great. Uh, Rubicante, any of those two CP ones where we've only got a pitch two. Or again, something like a Terra Citra here where we can recover a summon would be really nice as well. I'm glad to see Rainy went up to five backups. And she'll actually just discard the Selkie for turn pass. Not bad, it's a dead backup at this point anyway, so doesn't feel too bad to have to get rid of that card. We are set up just how we want to be. Two Lightning CP, three different Fire CP, which is nice. And then the question is, will Vaughn respond in kind and also get a uh, fifth backup out to complete? Nope, we're just going to drop a Lua. Send her in. Hopefully don't run into a burst here. That's a Lua's worst enemy. And we did not. Eldora Emperor. Uh, we're happy to see that go for Van. That card is a pain in the butt. And he's happy to pass with five in hand at that point and just says, all right, what do you got for this Lua? Now, the good news is we do have Mutsuki. So we have a very easy way to pop this bubble if we want to. And then we can just cast anything we want on it. Odin, Bahamut's obviously super overkill. Rubicante, we could put out in front now because we're on three damage, so we'd have enough to just be a bigger body than the Alua, which is nice. All right, and we popped the bubble with our Mitsuki, brought down Kuja, deal another point of damage. We'll take a point of damage, but we're on five now, which is we're more than happy to be there in this deck. I don't remember if she runs Behemoth King or not, but regardless, Aldori Emperor is now fully live. And we got rid of that pesky Alua. And so now we're passing it back to Van. Say, so, okay, what do you got? I would like to see Van get out another backup here. Again, something like a lid would be really nice. Another Sakura would be perfect to take out this Kuja. Still haven't seen that Albi yet. Been, definitely been waiting for that card. Although, again, we have to be a little cautious now that our, our opponent is on five. If, if she runs Behemoth King... That's especially worrisome. If not, then really Aldori Emperor is the big one that we have to worry about. However, if we can get another Alua out, I wouldn't say that makes it tricky because, again, the Mutsuki kind of nullifies the Alua a little bit. It just makes it really easy to get rid of it. Oh, no. We'll put out an Adia. I bet this is going to get Amaterasu'd. Adia is going to threaten to break. What did we... We threw out an Opus 8 Odin and a Ramu. And the question is, does she value this? I mean, if we've got the Amaterasu in hand, unless unless we're waiting for something bigger, that that would be that would be the reason to hold it. Is if we're really worried about an Astinian Hemoth King. But yep, yeah, I think we're just gonna go ahead and do it here. Amaterasu, get rid of the idea. Force our opponent to be again on the back foot, say, alright, well you gotta put out more forwards. If he had Alba here, I would really like to see Alba come down, get rid of a summon, swing in for eight. I mean, let him trade Kuja for Alba and start removing some of these summons from the break. So both Amaterasu are currently in the break zone. So again, if we can remove some of that, there's no more Amaterasu because I'm pretty sure there's only two in this list, if I remember correctly. And with that, Van's just going to pass it right back to Rainy. She'll go right into attack phase. 
who just is going to smack us for a third point of damage. And there goes Fel Thanos. So I knew he had the card in this matchup. And it's hard to say because Fel Thanos does stop a lot. It stops at Aldori Emperor, but doesn't stop Ranjit. It doesn't stop any of these 6 CP Odins. It doesn't stop the 7 CP Odins. So, yeah, I'm not sure how great that is. And, yep, here we go. That's us saying get back that Amaterasu. We really wanted to see Alba or Kuja or not Kuja, Kadaj, something. We got to get these summons back because this is this is where Rainy thrives is being able to just reuse these Amaterasus over and over and over again. Interesting. We threw out a Zemus. Even though we're on 3 C three damage, do we have another one? Okay, we did have another one. I was going to say, I was like, surely he wasn't just, no, okay, he moved it back to hand. I was like, wait a minute, I feel like you want to be playing that Zemus. Okay, yeah, he said that was the wrong one. I was going to say, I was like, uh, I don't know if we want to be throwing out Zemus here. That's a pretty key card. Threw out another Odin. We got quite a few Odins in the break zone. One, two, three, four Odins in the break zone. So this six CP Odin is actually two right now, which is pretty nice. And then the question is, Rainy's probably wondering, maybe not wondering, but... I wonder if she's going to Amaterasu this. Let's see. So we're going to target Behemoth King and Sakura. Both good choices. Put us back to four in hand. We, we need to get some pressure, though. And I'm not sure how we do that. Behemoth King might just be... I don't know. I mean, if they go to five, you've got the Behemoth King play. Which, to be fair, Rainy is on five, too. So if that Behemoth King swings... It's just dead on attack. But we do have Amaterasu in hand. Again, we need a way to bait that out. So we actually... Oh, no, we didn't go for Behemoth King. We got back Kane instead. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, I wonder what Van's trying to do. I, I feel like the Kane is just too risky right now with the Amaterasu. If, if we had a backup that we were getting something off of as it went to the break zone, a la Fusoya, Crow, Ran Pierce, something like that, I would definitely love the cane here, but just gonna cast Odin to break Kuja. Yep, he's that's one of those ones where we're like, go ahead, play Kuja again, put yourself up to six. And that's it. So we ramped up to five. Zemus was good because he helped her fill our hand. And then the Odin's gonna make sure we only take one point of damage next turn, assuming no haste, which is pretty nice. Both players have played very efficiently this game. Both of them are holding uh seven you know seven cards in hand he'll have seven on his turn no burst help here aldo back up isn't a terrible thing to see hit damage either though because that was a pretty dead card and now rainy so here's a kind of interesting spot that i wonder if van van thought about was that most of her forwards have some kind of removal on entry <laughs> whereas right now if she plays you know what is aldo or emperor gonna do right now there's nothing to target so march wouldn't be bad let us dig deeper another terra would be pretty good Get back a summon. Doubt it was anything with haste since we've already skipped. Rubicante just as a blocker. But yeah, those removal based forwards are, are not doing anything for us at the moment. So we'll see what Sleepy Ops to put down. Gonna tap three, pitch five. Okay, so is this Aldori? No, it's Gilgamesh. Oh, great card. Yeah, that was absolutely what we wanted to do. Leave up too bad. We leave up the Mutsuki if we need it. We can still Amaterasu and Gilgamesh is going to guarantee uh, I'm killing something on your field. However, this is a good chance for if we have another one of these Odins for Van to respond with, just get rid of this thing before it can get its guaranteed break off. So this is a pretty pretty key turn. That was good pressure play there by Rainy. Yep, and there it is. We can cast that Odin for a single CP because we have so many Odins in the break zone. Just go ahead and get rid of Gilgamesh. It was a good play by Rainy. I like that forward a lot. And unfortunately, our opponent just had the Odin to, to take it out right away. And would love to see a Lua here or Alba. Both cards are very strong in this situation. We want that haste. Is this Astinian? It is Astinian. Oh, man. Oh, this is interesting. Astinian cannot be amaterasu would it can only be Amaterasu if something blocks it, and that creates the auto ability, but his other effect is an action ability. So Astinian's just looking to go for game here. If we don't hit a burst, she needs something in hand to kill this card, or this is going to be game right now. The Azure Dragoon's going to come in and just put an end to this nonsense. Oh, do we have anything? Okay, we got something. Bahamut. Odin. Oh, no. 
Okay, yep. Yeah. So Odin goes ahead and breaks it. Man, g- good power play, though. Astinian would have been our finisher. <laughs> Both of our opponents are just loaded up with Odins, though. I think that might have been Rainy's last six cost Odin. Yes, it was her last six cost. Got two seven costs in there, too. I'm not sure how many she runs. Woo! Well, she's very glad she held that one back because that was going to be an issue if Astinian just went in and, and finished it off. And the question is, does Van follow this up with anything? Main two. Still haven't seen Alba. Would have really loved to have seen, again, to start getting rid of some of these summons so that way we didn't have that Amaterasu recursion. Stinian nearly stealing it there. Van's going to pass his turn. Rainy's going to go in for number five. Oh, and it's a Dia. Dia is going to just go ahead and knock out that Citra. A nice, helpful burst. And we're on five now. So if we have Behemoth King in hand, our opponent has to be careful. Now, again, I know we still have... Or do we not have Amaterasu? Is Amaterasu gone? I can't remember. One, two, three. No, I think we got one back off of... Was it a Citra? Or was it Terra? I must be thinking of an earlier moment, because I thought earlier in the match, both Amaterasu, but I think we do still have one in hand. So we won't die outright to the Behemoth King, because we can cancel one of its auto abilities, which is nice. But we definitely want to get a forward out here, because we still haven't seen Alba yet. We've got this Red Mage back up. Van has just got all kinds of threatening things for haste. I, I mean, I don't know what you have in hand, but Aldori Emperor, just for the big body. Leave those summons open, that summon slot open, just like you have been. So that's probably your best blocker. Pitch our own red mage for cloud. Interesting. Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. If we get this cloud out of the way, we've got 14 left in deck. So cloud can absolutely use his revival trigger. Blast something for currently 8k, possibly 9. If he if she ends up taking a point of damage. It would put her incredibly low in deck. But hey, if she finishes him off the next turn, then what does it matter? So this, this could be it. This might be the end of the game here. This has got to be Kane. We're going to... We've just sent Zemus to the break zone. We threw out Lightning. Haven't seen it all. Kane's going to come down. Shrink Cloud by 8. Now, this won't kill Cloud. So, unless we have a way to ping it off. Or I wonder if he's even maybe trying to bait out the Amaterasu. But I don't know. I don't know if you need to. Because I, I think you really only... I think, yeah. I think the only thing you care about with Cloud at this point is that he's a body. So, as long as he can still block... Which we'll see. Because if we have a Lua and we have Shoal. Pitch a Sakura. Oh, we played another Z. Oh, nice. We had another Zemus in hand. How nice is that? Getting to resolve Zemus twice on damage three. So while we didn't have a, a trigger for going to the break zone, we, it did allow us to open up again. So we can get Behemoth King here. We can get a Lua. If we've got another Lua in hand, that's Shoal power. We could get a Stinian again. Try to go for that. We're actually going to grab another copy of Zemus and Behemoth King. We're on five damage. And what will that put us? Four cards in hand. If we tap, pitch two. That would only leave us with one left. And if as long as she has Amaterasu, we can't die this turn. Because there would be no way to give Kane hate. No, no, technically we could pitch that last card in hand. Well, no, not if we tapped. Yeah, I don't think there's... Unless we have a Lua, I don't think there's a way to get... But even then, there's not a way to get a Lua and Behemoth King out. So I don't think Rainy loses this turn. Unless there's a surprise I'm not seeing. And honestly, if we just have another Odin in hand, that's fine too. We just break the Behemoth King. Yeah, so I don't know if he was even necessarily trying to get rid of the Cloud with the cane play as much as he just wanted to get Zemus down again so he could get his card back. And here we go. We're going for it. Behemoth King comes down. Going to try to end the game. Sleepy as a reaction. It's probably going to be Odin. Yep, absolutely is. For just two CP, too, that feels pretty good. We'll just go ahead and break that. And that's twice that or Sleepy Rain Dog has staved off defeat with a key Odin timing. I wonder how many summons she's got left. Roll out of the six ones. That's two of the fives. Pass back. And then Aldora Emperor here would be pretty nice. Because we can easily just get rid of the cane. 
We'll just blast him out of existence. Our opponent's only got one card left in hand, and we already used our Zemus trick, so... So unless we just top deck something amazing, I, I, Rainy's really in control here right now. She's still got five in hand. I mean, I really would have loved to have seen that Alba, or I, I think he runs Kadaj. I'm not 100% sure, but just you got to take these summons out of the equation. Letting him, you know, recall Amater Amaterasu is cast way too many times in this match to have any hope of victory. But, of course, if we don't draw Alba, then it doesn't matter, right? So... You can only play with what you draw. All right, and Sleepy is going to play Axtar. We're going to trigger Citra to get back an Odin from our break zone. And then we actually searched out the Aldori Emperor, too. Now, she's in a pretty commanding position, so I don't think this will matter. But it is interesting to note that we have now cut off our Cloud ability because we only have 11 in deck now. So if our opponent somehow forces us to use Cloud and we bring it back... We're just going to deck out on the next turn. So Cloud's ability is pretty much off the table, but we're probably okay with that. Again, she's in a pretty commanding spot. She got the Odin back in hand, so even if Van can somehow get some kind of offense here, the, surely the Odin's just going to stop it. He's only got one in hand. Here comes Aldori Emperor. Take out the, the Kane. And the question is if Rainy attacks here, because, I mean, there's not really a difference as far as his deck's concerned between five and six. He's already on five, so the behemoth is, so it's really, what do we hit here? A burst would be huge. No burst, okay. It is a dead backup, though, so we are happy to see that go, so. I don't know what Van could top here. He's going to have to top, I guess, I don't even know. I don't know what it could be. Is there an idea left? We can't threaten... I don't know. I just have no idea what he could possibly draw here for... To stave this off. Because, again, even if he threatens something like a Behemoth King, we know she's got the Odin in hand. Or did she pitch the Odin? No, I'm pretty sure she's still got the Odin in hand, so... So, regardless of what he does... Yeah, I just don't see a way out of this one. Got the Behemoth King. Yep, got to go for it. All or nothing. We had a Diana in hand. Interesting. So we could have gotten back an Alba had we'd ever gotten to it. Here comes back our Odin. Pitch to Gilgamesh. Cast Odin. Yep, Behemoth King. That's going to be game one. Going to Sleepy Rain Dog. Very well played by her. Well played by Van, too. It's nice to see them both just kind of curve out and hold on. And then, yeah, so we'll go to game two, and we will see... Who can take the victory and welcome to game two folks so a very similar open here from van he throws out a diana go ahead and because blah, 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 can't speak all of a sudden throws out diana goes ahead and puts down a red mage backup well he's happy to see this guy and rainy will respond mitsuki from mitsuki seems pretty solid to me and we saw some early aggression from both of these players last time or in particular from rainy that she put out that early. She was able to see her album, and Van, most likely, I guess he never saw it, because I never saw it got pitched or anything, so I'm sure it was at the hanging out at the bottom of his deck. We went and pitch a Dia and Lightning. Zemus, we will get back probably Lightning. We didn't get to use Lightning at all last time, and that is a card we definitely want to play out, get ourselves two of our own Odins, and then that way you can pull out the ones that don't have the burst, hopefully leave those in there. But we're happy to be on two backups already. Now Rainy just has to get some lightning CP, and then she will be in business. Perhaps that Kali Cheval. Take out that last copy of Mutsuki if it's in there. That works just as well, too. Selkie's going to reveal Aldori Emperor. Add that straight to hand. Does have six in hand. Do we have a third backup we can put out? That'd be kind of nice. We went ahead and pitched an Odin. I really don't want to have to discard for hand. So a Terra would also be good here if we have a forward Terra or March. Otherwise, a Kali Cheval. We'll go ahead and pitch a Philly. I didn't see that at all last time. And we'll just go ahead and throw out Rubicante. Say, all right, time for a little early pressure. What do you got for this? Alu is, again, a great counter to this if we have it. But I 
I mean, Sakura is also very good. I was just thinking, I was like, you know what also really works for that? Sakura backup. Just go ahead and punish it. Remove its on death effect. And Van says pass back D. We've got a 2, a 4, and a 4, and we got 2, 3. So if we get Kali Cheval, we'll have 2, 3, 4 here on Rainy's side. So Van has thrown out Diana, Adia, and Odin. And Rainy has thrown out Rubicante. Now another Odin, Ilya, and Mutsuki. There's Moody. We'll go ahead and get Amaterasu. Yep, that summon put in a lot of work for her last time, so she is more than happy to hold that in hand for our opponent, and we can even leave the Selkie up and just threaten it. Hey, if you put out some kind of uh, auto ability here, I'm just going to get rid of it. And says, okay, well, how about this action? Alua, <laughs> Amaterasu says nothing to her as long as we don't run into a burst. We're good. Oh my goodness, I jinxed it. Did I jinx you, Van? I'm so sorry. So the bad news is Alua died immediately. The good news is that is one less Odin for you to deal with later. These five CP Odins actually ended up being pretty crucial at the end of that last game. So there's one you'll never have to worry about. Little EX burst luck goes Sleepy's way and we're right back where we started. And there's Alba. We're going to go ahead and remove our opponent's Odin. The only Odin we had. It's a shame if we didn't have that in there. We could not give this card haste right now. And then I'm guessing we're going to throw out the Alua when we attack as well. Can we get any reverse burst luck? Get our own Ramu or Odin or something. And that's negative. We will actually... We basically lost two Aluas there by having one removed from the break zone and then have a Sita Clan Gully hit into damage. Wouldn't have been a bad way to curve out. Rainey's been really good about mount, mounting this early pressure, and that, that EX burst was very unfortunate for Van. We really wanted to... I mean, if we could have kept that Alua around... That card just that card just puts in so much work, and it's nice because it's such a nice counter to this Odin style deck where you have to just pay so much to get rid of it. But when a burst just does it for you, hey, then you got to worry about it. Of course, we do is have the Mutsuki. Citra will come down, get us back Amaterasu in hand. We are not letting go of that card. That card canceling X Death last time really hurt us. So, oh, it looks like we're going for a Kane again. We went ahead and got rid of Zemus. Kane's going to come down. We pitched our own Odin. We're going to just get rid of Alba. Rainy's fine to let that go through. And again, this is the time when you want to do an auto ability like this, because this way, if your opponent does Amaterasu, they've got to pitch three cards from hand to do it. I wonder if he runs Lulu in this deck. I mean, it's mono lightning, so you would kind of think so, but Lulu would be really good with cards like Kane to just keep him out of dying to that Amaterasu range. We'll go ahead and fetch out another cane. Probably happy to throw that away. He's done a really good job of cycling Zemus so far. Of being able to just put Zemus out multiple times. Still would love to see our own version of Alba. I have not seen that yet from getting the van. And we got so many juicy summons here we can get rid of. All right, and Rainy responds with Eldori Emperor. We're going to go ahead and take off that cane. Citra will hit a Diana into the damage zone. That might be all our Dianas, which is kind of okay because we can't seem to draw Alba to save our life, which means Diana is kind of pointless. Although we really would love a little revenge EX burst that our opponent got. And Sleepy Rain Dog still holding five cards in hand. She is just more than happy to just constantly keep removing anything Van can do here. All right, getting the van actually had Alba, threw her out with Felthanos to target, to have X-Death come in. But I guess X-Death, okay, is going to have Diana get back the Alba. Very interesting. Normally, you like to see a, a kind of a big bad boss monster here, but he's just going for the value. And Rain, uh, Sleepy's basically trying to decide if she wants to respond to this or not. Cast Amaterasu from hand. Uh, is it worth it? I don't know. It could be. You've got the pressure but yeah and you could do that too you could actually let the die I mean it doesn't really matter you can wait till the Diana resolves Amaterasu and kill it but if you do it on the X death it never comes back in the first place anyway so it's kind of irrelevant which way you do it 
he doesn't have anything in this deck to like bump her up to protect her, so. And is she deciding? No, okay, looks like she let it go through. So we did get Alba, we got a single Diana out there. This Diana cannot block any of these forwards. Man, I, I'm guessing we're not running Lulu in this deck, which seems so strange for Mono Lightning. That was always a weakness of that element was that its forwards were generally a bit smaller, so I'm really surprised we don't, or maybe we just haven't drawn her. Again, I don't have the deck list in front of me, so maybe there's a Lulu that we just haven't seen, but. Again, that power boost would be really nice. Would mean our Lightning, our Kane cannot die to Amaterasu. And even though he's got one more backup, he's already on two damage. Sleepy Rain Dog has the two bigger forwards. And she's sitting pretty with seven in hand. Just going to go ahead right in for the attack phase. Sakura. And Van is getting no favors from his EX burst count, which is kind of funny because they're both well running a bunch of bursts with all these summons, but. There's the second Sid of Clan Gully. Are these, yeah, other than the Diana, that's three backups we've hit into damage. Which, again, isn't terrible because we've only got room for one more, but especially after, I mean, this Odin is the MVP right now, right? How much, how different would this game look if we had a Lua? And a Lua, even if you use Mutsuki Ping to get rid of it, that's still that CP you're forcing out of your opponent. So that's two CP just to get rid of the bubble. And then you've got to pay however much for your Emperor, for your Odin, whatever you want to pay. So and that Odin is legit. <laughs> it just ruined Van's game. And it was very first burst. That's quite unfortunate. All right. Rainy will end her turn by putting Gilgamesh to the field. Alba's going to finally make her appearance. We will remove one of the Odins from her break zone. Uh, who do we have in here? Took out one of the six drops. And, I mean, yeah, we're, you're taking out some kind of Odin. She'll go to 8,000. Now, the only issue is, on her own, she can't push through. You can technically bump her with Diana, if you want to. Alba will attack. Take out, probably, Rubicante or our own Alba. I don't recall her having any body recursion, so I don't think it really matters. But we want that 8K boost. And Rainy will defend with Gilgamesh. We'll bait out the Diana bump. Diana will raise Alba to 10,000, in which case we can just have Gilgamesh break one of the two. And the question is, who do you break? Probably the Alba. She's really the one that has any kind of threat. The Diana doesn't do anything by herself. I'm guessing these two aren't on voice comms because I see him typing in the chat. So, did we not use Gilgamesh's ability? All right, so we had a little judge ruling. I had to clear up there, but yeah, so Alba attacked. We defended with Gilgamesh. Alba was 8,000, Diana bumped her to 10, but then we just went and sacrificed Gilgamesh, put it in the break zone to just break the Alba outright, and then it looks like we got rid of X-Death from the backup line, put down another Kane. Van is really valuing these Kanes. This is like, what, the fourth or fifth time he's gotten Kane off? Yeah, I really would have loved to have seen, if he's going to Kane this much, I would have loved to have seen a backup that benefits from Kane, again, like Crow, um... Probably not Rampier in this deck, but the Fusoya, just the Argy even, just like something so that when Kane's putting all these backups into the break zone, we're getting uh, extra bonus. Because Crow is so nice for that, and that not only are you getting your Kane effect off, now Crow's going to give you that much more. Uh, she's going to give you a forward back, so. So we're both on three backups at this point. Sleepy Rain Dog has seven in hand. Van only has three. Surely we'll have some form of removal we can use. Throw out another Odin. I'm just going to cast an Odin outright. No, Axtar. Oh, no. <laughs> Man, Axtar. This, this Odin, like I said, this Odin is just MVP. Right? He's the only damage Sleepy Rain has taken, and it put a stop to that early Alua which is one of Van's best cards in this matchup. And now it just gives Axstar free ammo to 
We'll just blow them to smithereens. All right, we'll go to attack phase, attack the Eldori Emperor. Interesting thing was, though, because it's that specific Odin, we actually could not target Kane. Oh, did we get some luck? No, we didn't. Oh, man. Adia is there for the burst, but it completely whiffs because we needed at least a fourth backup down. Definitely a bit of an anti-synergy here with Adia and Kane. These <laughs> right there, we're showing that these cards don't play so well together. Adia wants a bunch of backups, as does... Estinian, but Kane does not. So while Kane has certainly put in work getting rid of forwards for us, man, he's he's really hurt us with as much as he's eaten up that backup line. And that's again why I like if you're going to have to get rid of a backup for this Kane, I would really prefer it to be something that gets you back for losing that backup because that's that's a lot to ask, especially again with this anti synergy with the Adia and the Estinian, two cards that want to see as many lightning backups as possible. All right, we threw out another Lightning. Have yet to see Lightning a single time in this matchup. X-Death is going to go for the very same Diana Alba trigger, but we've got Amaterasu in hand to just cancel it out right anyway. Going to put a stop to that. And this one is looking like it's wrapping up, folks. Van only has two cards left in hand. I mean, we're probably not a threat to die next turn. Well, we could be. We only need no. We just need some form of simple removal for this cane, which is pretty helpful. But even if, like, he's on five damage, but even if he gets down a behemoth king or something, Rainy is only taking a single point of damage. There's just no way he's going to, you know, hit that hard. We actually threw out Alua for Alba. Interesting. So we can go ahead and get rid of that Amaterasu which is nice. Or no, we're actually, no, we're gonna say get rid of the Odin instead, interesting. I would rather not deal with the Odin. I almost wonder if the Alua would have been better here. I mean, it's nice to get rid of that Odin, but we weren't swinging in with Alba anyway, and the Alua at least, again, forces Rainy to use up more of our resources to take him out. And let's see, did we have the potential for Shoal left in our deck? One Alua's been removed from the game. And then that one we just... So there would have still been one Alua left in our deck. Yeah, I, I really think Alua was actually the better choice here. I get why we got rid of that. But at this point, I mean, she's still got the five cost Odin in there. She's still got Amaterasu. She's got the big seven cost, which if she's sealing the game out, she's more than happy to cast. I, I really wish we'd put Alua out instead. Maybe he doesn't value her as much because of the Mitsuki. But again, like I said... You know, and I use this argument, too, with people who use Kuchaspel. Yes, Kuchaspel totally craps on any kind of protection or reduction. But it still forces economy out of them. So, again, if she Mutsuki pings right here, pops the Alua bubble, now she's playing at least... A, you're getting something out of her. Whereas right now, you know, we're just going to use that summon on Alba anyway. Or Kane or whoever to get him out of the way. I mean, if you have any removal here, you just take the cane out, swing in twice, Alba's gone. Your opponent has no cards in hand. There's just nothing they're going to be... Again, even if was he top deck behemoth king, swing in, put two points of damage on her. <laughs> she won't even be halfway dead at that point. And yeah, Rainy is just... Rainy's only been on three backups this whole game and just constant pressure. There's Kuja, so we'll help our opponent out. We'll say, hey, I'll tell you what, I'll deal myself a point. And again, if this had been Lua, you can't Kuja there. At least not without using the Mutsuki first. You Mutsuki, and now you've got to pitch another card from hand. So again, it does still at least mess with our opponent's economy. But whatever, it's done now. Here comes Aldori Emperor. You let this go through. Pray, pray, you get a burst. Nope, there's that last lightning we were never going to use. Absolutely zero help in the burst department from Van this game. Axtar will force the trade out with the cane. And again, what 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 do you draw here? It doesn't matter. There's just dad. Yeah, this game's pretty much over. There's just nothing he can draw. Again, if he had if he, he was closer on damage, the Behemoth King is always scary, but looks like that is going to be it. Sleepy Rain Dog will take this. 2-0. We'll stick with it to watch it finish it out, but. Unless we can somehow cast two Odins and reset the board. Can we cast two Odins? We only have one, 
two in our break zone, and two of them are these Opus 13 Odin, which we actually probably wouldn't mind seeing right now because they only cost two. We'll tap for... <laughs> go search out Aldo, which means the only four we could possibly play is another Alba. If we have a third one, or if there's a one cost in here I'm not aware of. Nope, looks like he doesn't have anything. That will be it. Sleepy Rain Dog takes it 2 0. Oh, good game, well played to all involved, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.